Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to Jason Mackey's First Ten, a quick hit podcast to get you ready for the day. Today is Wednesday, July 17th, and we're coming to you live from Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. I'm Jason Mackey, of course, and the one and only Andrew Destin is to my right, your left on the screen. I'm going to talk to you about Paul Skeen's outing, the All-Star game, this entire experience, what we saw. But before we do that, I do want to remind you that we're sponsored by the North Shore Tavern. You don't have to be a baseball fan to love it there. The interior is Walter Wall Pirates. There are appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and a forced steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone open every day. The North Shore Tavern across from PNC Park is Pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone. All right, Andrew. So I, I think we would be remiss to not discuss um, one Paul Skeens and his outing today. It was just one inning, 16 pitches, 11 strikes, um, a lot of walk to Juan Soto. He did face Aaron Judge. What you take away from that? That was the focus of your game story, right? Uh, well, which was more than one pitch. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But in all seriousness, yeah, I mean, hey, he did a heck of a job out there in the one inning work that he had. Was efficient aside from the Soto at bat, which was still impressive. I mean, Soto was truly fooled by the two splinters that he did see, which was fun to watch just in the sense of one of the game's best hitters and one of the best hitters at drawing walks, working counts. Yeah, he got there, but he, he had to earn it. Um, and, and, you know, and Judge was funny about it. He was like, yeah, I mean, I was aggressive first pitch I was looking to swing because I'm not getting deep in account against a guy who throws 100 and plus and can throw all of his pitches which just goes to show you know the kind of respect that this guy is garnering in the game um, these are some of baseball's biggest hitters best hitters um, so that was just really impressive to watch would have been like nice to see him go a little bit longer but I fully understand the circumstances here uh, in an exhibition game so it's been really cool being here with Andrew, um, one, because I like him so much, but two, there's just been a lot to cover and a lot to get to. Um, the two of us have just spent the past couple of days asking so many people in the game about Paul Skeens and what they've been impressed by, um, his attitude, how he pitches, um, his stuff, all of it. Um, I, I don't know how many we've totaled, probably a dozen at least yeah. um, of all-stars here and their impressions, but I wanted to ask you, what have your – you know, the, the quotes that resonated with you the most are guys that have said things about schemes. Which ones stand out to you the most? Yeah, Bryce Harper and Aaron Judge. Those okay. are the two guys. Uh, Bryce Harper basically said that, yeah, I'm looking forward to facing him for the next 10 to 15 years of our careers. <laughs> and Aaron Judge said, yeah, this is cool. It's his first All-Star game start, but I'm looking forward to the next few that are down the line. Like that both these guys have the utmost confidence that, A, he's going to stick around for a while, which maybe is to be expected, but B, that they expect him to stay elite. Um, and I, I think that just goes to show that this isn't a Dwight Gooden where it's an electric fastball that eventually the velo is going to taper off and you become average. Um, this isn't you know, a flash in the pan like a Tim Lincecum where you have a devastating changeup and eventually it catches up with you because you don't develop that third pitch. That's not Paul Skeens. Like, this guy is as close to a finished product as you can possibly imagine of a 22-year-old. Heck, he's probably more of a finished product than most of the guys that we saw out there today. Yeah. You know, So I think that just goes to show – what those two guys uh, had to say. How about yourself? Um, Christian Yelich was one of all of all things. He said, you know, not to downplay 100, but we see 100 quite a bit yeah. in the stuff. And I'm going to paraphrase Christian Yelich a little bit. Um, but it's not just 100. There's so much more. There's command. Um, yeah, he can reach back and throw 100, which makes all the rest of it that much more complicated. But, yeah, I mean, that that's the takeaway that I've had. And we've seen this. You watching and listening to this, you know this. But those on the national stage are sort of realizing it. you have throwers, you have pitchers. And to me, Paul Skeens is very much a pitcher. I asked Paul after this if he kind of enjoyed on this stage getting to show that a little bit because I do think he does. I, I think he is a pitching nerd. He's just kind of a, a learning nerd. Like he enjoys getting into a game and figuring out what works, shelving what doesn't work, and just showing that he's so much more than somebody who throws 100. So, I mean, that was – the Yelich quote was what resonated with me the most. I guess secondarily would be Bryce Harper, too. That was one that we uh, kind of yeah. doubled up on. That's all right. It's a good quote <laughs> to get. Um, but Harper said to me about you know comparing him to Strasburg. He said, I haven't seen anything like this since Strasburg with the type of devastating stuff that Paul has. Yeah, it's truly impressive. I mean, it, it's once in a generation. That's the talent that they've got here. And, you know, it's funny. I know we've both made this point and talked about it, but, like, it's funny to think that a year ago there was actually a debate about who the Pirates are going to take number one. I know. Because, right? <laughs> like, I think it was a warranted one, right? Like, Dylan Cruz is a huge prospect, too. There are a couple of elite guys there and Max Clark and Wyatt Langford. But um, I think it's safe to say the Pirates got that one, right? Yeah, I, I think so, too. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short break. As always, we have a short message from the Bradenton Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Then we're going to talk about Andrew's first impressions of covering an All-Star game and some other stuff that went into today and yesterday. Stay with us. 
Embrace the laid-back charm of island life while sinking your toes in the sand and discovering real, authentic Florida in the Bradenton area. Unspoiled beauty and pristine beaches, a vibrant waterfront downtown energized by local arts and culture, fresh Floribian cuisine with a flourish of rich history, and friendly locals ready to welcome you to this preserved paradise on Florida's Gulf Coast. Plan your visit today at BradentonGulfIslands.com. All right, thanks for joining us and staying with us on First Ten. So your first MLB All-Star game, these things are kind of frantic, right? What would you make of it? Yeah, I mean, it's been fortunate enough in my career to attend things like the NHL All-Star game and the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, but I think this one might have taken the cake, if you can believe that, guys. Right. <laughs> that was, uh, A, just truly a blast, um, you know, getting to interact with other media members that hold a lot of high regard for interacting with some of the game's greatest stars. But, um, yeah, it was a lot. It was well put on just in the sense of, being able to access so many guys, I think that was the thing that I found most enjoyable was that once it became clear who the four guys were that were going to face Paul Skeens, um, we were able to talk to all of them for as long as you needed to, basically. Everyone was available. So that was really cool just in that sense. But, um, you know, this is, of all the all-star games across the major pro sports, in my opinion at least, this is the best one. This is the most revered. This is the most tenured, all those sorts of things. So um, I, I really, really definitely enjoyed it. And it was, uh, it was fun to do it alongside you, man. Yeah. Uh, likewise, likewise. Um, one of the things that I enjoyed, this is weird, but um, being on the red carpet and doing that story, that was just so atypical. Um, I've never waited on a red carpet for like an hour for somebody to walk down and talk to them for, you know, a minute or whatever. But I mean, it, it is a cool story. And it's something I've been chasing for weeks, if not months, uh, to talk to Libby Dunn about what it's like being a part of Pittsburgh and, um, you know, sort of being an adopted person here uh, you know it's no secret pittsburgh loves paul skeens loves libby dunn it's a neat story um joining this sort of life and city and, and the passion that you all have for the pirates so that was something that was just you know i've done a few of these things that was something that certainly stood out to me but i agree with you there's a lot going on talking to rob manfred and tony clark earlier today i can't believe that we've been here since about 10 a.m this morning but hey what are you going to do it's uh, it's all in a day's work it's all in good fun uh, as far as the rest of the game, though, Andrew, what did you make of it? So Brian Reynolds single, uh, a Shohei Otani blast. That was pretty cool. Um, any other moments that stand out to you? Maybe it was Otani. I feel like we got to talk about Mason Miller, right? Oh, um, you're right. Good call. Re rearing it back. Yep. Fastest pitch in All-Star game history, if I have that correct. Yep. At 103.6. I mean, the local kid, how can you not be happy for him? You know, selfishly, grew up an A's fan, so that's fun to watch. Yep. But, um, no, but seriously, there's so many cool moments. That was one that certainly – Stood out to me. Otani going yard. Reynolds with the single. I mean, uh, Jaron Duran going deep. I mean, he's yeah. a fun one, too, for the Red Sox. Uh, a lot of fun moments. But Miller, as the local guy, that certainly stands out to me. All right. So I talked a little bit about your story on the podcast on Connor Griffin. We're going to switch gears to, to the draft a bit. But I want to ask you, because you're here and you have more insight into him than anybody else, what do you make of him? Ooh. Pretty high character, huh? Uh, tremendous character. I think that's the thing. And maybe that's, you know, frankly, a theme. I think it's something you brought up to, to Ben Charrington. Awesome. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's something they did in general with this draft is I feel like maybe that's more of a recurring theme, really, with who these guys are picking um, in this draft process, the Pirates. But, yeah, Connor Griffin seems like as high character of a guy as any as you can get. Um, you know, whether that's the little anecdotes like going to his high school coach's daughter's dance recital, <laughs> um, making time for her, like, Little gestures like that. Like, this is a guy that is not too big for the moment. Um, he was willing to coach 9- and 10-year-old kids with batting lessons just because he felt like it, because people had done it for him, and he felt the need to pay it back. It comes from a dad who was a 14-year college coach, coach of softball. I can't say enough about the family. Um, one, just impressed by them, the way the kid was raised, but two, uh, the intangible tools. This is a guy that, if it all works out, you know, the ceiling is very, very high. Now, it's a big ask. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's a high school kid. He was the first high school kid off the board. But there's a reason behind that. There's yep. a lot of potential there. Yeah, I like to pick a lot myself. I'm totally fine with it the way the draft board fell. I think they made the smartest pick. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer. But you know what? Given the mandate of the draft, I mean, you're drafting to get the most talent, not necessarily fill a major league need. It's totally fine with it. I'm excited to get back to Pirates baseball, man. They've won 7 of 10 going into the break, 48 and 48. And I have a story talking to Paul Skeens about that, talking to Brian Reynolds about that in the excitement level in the clubhouse for the second half. What about you? What are you looking forward to? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The second half, the thing I'm most curious about is how do they fare over this next couple of weeks? I think that's going to determine so much about their future for this season as well as beyond that, right, for 2025. Is 2025 the year that they go all in, or do they view it as a year that here sitting at 48 and 48? Can they get five or six games over, get themselves into the wild card picture, and then 
hey, maybe you add. Maybe instead of trading off a guy like Aroldis Chapman, you add to the team more. You beefing it up. You get an outfield bat. You get a corner infielder. Uh, frankly, these next two weeks are going to be super, super interesting on my end. Yep, no doubt. Looking forward to it. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can get all of our Pirates content. Um, Steelers are starting up. Pitt's starting up. All kinds of stuff happening at the North Shore Drive podcast channel. Thank you for watching. As always, I'll be back here same time, same place tomorrow with First 10. Uh, talk to you then, everybody. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.